My name is Ed Mason. I am the founder and CEO of Gameface Labs. We are an Android-based virtual reality console, as opposed to a head-mounted device that you need to plug into a stationary machine. We have this little guy here, which is a completely untethered virtual reality experience. You can see you have no cables connecting you to any stationary machines, which in my opinion is how VR needs to be from day one. Um, this is the Mark IV that we've been showing off since uh, the last time we met, back in, uh, I think it was GDC. And we've added a few new components to this particular device. Uh, first and foremost is the new display panel. So we now have a 2560 by 1440 display panel, Quad HD or 2.5K, depending on how you like it. And uh, this has been a significant step up. We feel that a 2.5K resolution is really what VR needs from starting point. We think anything lower than that, the screen door effect is too apparent, and you lose the immersion. So this is something that is very much a proof of concept, but we have redesigned and at E3 uh, on the 10th of June we'll be announcing the Mark V, which has a few cool new additions over what we see here. And so every time we come out with a new prototype, we have been effectively Frankensteining a bunch of everyday devices to get the components that we need. Now that we've come out and we've shown the world what we're doing and we've instilled a little bit more confidence in, into people, we've now been able to start dealing directly with component manufacturers. And as such, we've sourced a lot more powerful components that we were previously unable to get our hands of. Uh, first and foremost was the Tegra K1 chip, also known as Project Jetson, um, which is a tremendously powerful uh, chipset, and we've now received those and we've started building that into hopefully a device that we'll be showing off at E3. Um, that being said, it's not just system on chips we've been focusing on, although we have spoken to Qualcomm as well and we're lined up to get one of their later generation SOCs as well. It's trackers, it's display panel manufacturers, it's even down to the degree of 3D printing. We have been now reaching out to people and being able to deal with them with, with more confidence behind what we're doing uh, from both their side and from our side. We absolutely love this idea that you can put a phone in a case. I think anything that will be a bit of a segue into getting more people into virtual reality is tremendous. Now we see everyone likes having fast processing power in their pocket. They upgrade their phones every year, they get a new laptop, they get a new iPad. This is something that we know people like fast processing power at their disposal. And that's something that we've realized that the rate that mobile hardware is advancing we can produce a pretty good virtual reality experience today. So what we can do with the next couple of generations of SOCs, we should really be able to create something fantastic. Now, if you ever get the chance to try Gameface and try one of these other devices, such as the, the Alter Gaze, then it's very well worth trying to remember the, the, the different experience. Now, some guys are doing better than others in these phone holders, but they each have their own sort of pros and cons. Um, we've seen a lot of them, and I think, as I said, anything that helps people get into virtual reality is the way forward. I think people will realize I'm spending 30, 30 bucks, 50 bucks on one of these pieces of phone holders. They're not going to expect a, a VR experience on par to a 2,000 pound computer and a $500 headset. Um, so certainly it's something that I really feel it's a bit of a precursor to getting more developers involved and generating content for VR, which is very important. Content is always king, and this is something we've focused on for a long time. And uh, starting from about 2009, when we got involved with 3D gaming, we started collating a huge amount of high-quality stereo 3D content. Um, that is now getting part, passed through into Gameface, so you can now stream particular game videos and movie trailers and things directly into a virtual cinema within Gameface. Uh, that being said, we've also uh, dabbled with cloud gaming, and we have a cloud solution that we'll be uh, making public in the next few months that is really, in my opinion, even more exciting than the hardware itself, and that really goes to say just how cool this platform is. Um, so certainly it's something that, as time goes on, it's only going to get better from this point forward. So cloud gaming, this is not the cloud gaming that OnLive and Gaikai do. This is an entirely different type of cloud gaming. I can't say too much about it now, but we can get pretty much any game installed on your device faster than anyone else, in a nutshell. And you can play it as though it's natively installed. You're not downloading or you're not streaming pixels from a server. The game is on your device. So this will be in place by the consumer version. We may have a few demos in time for the, for the developer kit, but nonetheless, the dev kits are solely there to, to produce good enough content for the consumer version that's due sometime the following year. We're aiming at around the $500 mark. Um, that will obviously change once you get a little bit bigger. If we can now start taking into account economies of scale, there's certain aspects that we should be able to get the price down as we, as we get later on. But we are selling the hardware at cost because, of course, we have our platform in place. So we are, we are developing an app store that's solely populated with VR and stereo 3D gaming content and video content. Um, and this is a platform that we will open up and we're actually building into an Android VR OS, if you will, that we will open up to all these other devices such as uh, the Alter Gaze and the Open Dives in the world. So what we're doing is collating all of the content going back to Content as King by bringing together a, a comprehensive SDK with good documentation, with a platform that works with a lot of content. This is something we'll open up to any device that would like it. And this is something that we feel will further promote VR as, as something that 
people can now pick up any device but still have access to a wealth of content instead of them having to start from day one from where we were a couple of years ago and starting to build that up individually. The experience itself that you'll receive will obviously be infinitely better on, a, on a, one of these prototypes than it would be on one of the phone in the case. But nonetheless, as I say, it's really it's a segue into getting into VR. So I think if we can get developers developing apps that work rudimentary, rudimentary well on one of these phone in case devices, we know with a little bit of optimizing and a little bit of tweaking, we can get it working tremendously well on our device. So we have a developer program active at the moment and we have um, a couple of engineers who are actively working with AAA developers and the smaller developers and indies to, to produce some pretty high quality content.